Hello. Listen, I just want to say something. Um, be a blessing to you tonight. If we could only deal with the thoughts, Dr. Caroline Lee says in her book, uh, Switch on Your Brain, she said that as we think, we change the physical nature uh, of our brain. And as we consciously direct our thinking, we can wire toxic patterns of thinking and replace them with healthy thoughts. So in essence, what she says is that um, science has proven free will and relationship between thoughts and reality. Um, and the scripture tells us there in Romans 12 and 2, in a nutshell, it says, do not copy the behavior of the custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn how God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So that's a different translation, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind is basically what it's talking about. Um, we've got to deal with our thoughts. Uh, and the thoughts is where change takes place. If I could change your mind, I can change you. You know, when people are born, they're not necessarily born a doctor. Maybe with the ability, but, but with a proper training of thoughts, you can transform that individual into a successful doctor or attorney or senator or governor or whatever. But it's a thinking that's important. Excuse me. Uh, Jesus came in Matthew 4 and 17 teaching repentance, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus began preaching this, and this is simply a teaching on your view of thinking, the view of your thinking or regret or remorse. So what you choose to determine, what you choose determines your reality. So in essence, here we are again. There's a true relationship between um, thoughts and reality. Okay, definitely. But if you ever want to shift your life, then you have to definitely shift your thinking. And you have to be introduced to a new train of thought. Now, the reality is here, you, you do have the power to change your reality by shifting your focus. So many of us, our focus is in the wrong place. And so we end up with regrets that we wouldn't have had had we shifted our focus. The scripture says in Proverbs 3, sorry, Proverbs 23 and 7, as someone thinketh within himself, so is he. However you think, that's you. We are not victims of biology or circumstance necessarily. But if you've chosen to believe otherwise, the scripture, of course, sounds like hogwash to you. But again, science has proved already that the scripture is very much true. Dr. Leaf again wrote, uh, she says that when you think, uh, you build thoughts and these become physical substance in your brain. More than anything, guys, your thinking has a lot to do, all to do with how you're acting, has all to do with your belief system. So proper thinking helps your belief. The Greek word, uh, that's a Greek word I looked at, Jesus here, book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, when the Lord begins to talk with them about prayers and getting their prayers through, I found out that it was stuff that was trapped in our thought process that keeps us from getting the prayer, our prayers answered. Oftentimes our prayers are hindered 
because of, of our belief systems or because of something we're holding on to, such as unforgiveness. The word forgive is found in, the, in that chapter uh, 6, 14, uh, chapter 6, verse 14, uh, Matthew 6 of Matthew, verses 14 to 18, the, 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 and also verses 24 through 25, verses 31 through 34, excuse me. Uh, there are so many things that I've found there. Uh, one of the Greek word for forgive is, I believe is harizomai. The C is silent and, and it simply means grace bestowed unconditionally. And so whenever you forgive somebody, you make a conscious, deliberate decision to release uh, feelings of resentment or vintage. Uh, vengeance, I'm sorry. You make that belief. Now, the word for, when you break the word up for and give, what the word for means account of. And give, the word give means to freely transfer the possession. So when you forgive somebody, you release whatever the account is to them. All right? So um, the problem with a lot of us, a lot of people, is that they're holding on to too many bankrupt accounts, too many negative accounts. So we have, we're, we're out of balance because of our negatives, because we haven't forgiven those who trespassed against us, those violators who disregarded us and walked it past the keep out sign and did what they wanted to do. But you got to elevate your realm and walk in something different. The Lord said he wants us to walk in forgiveness. Because when you walk in forgiveness, you act as your heavenly father. Now, of course, the heavenly father reigns on the just and the unjust. Because he operates on a different principle. So, we have to understand this. That your response and your actions, according to foolishness, has me the only response you should have is I will go above this don't succumb yourself to the negativism and the foolishness that people give scripture says in that same chapter no man can serve two masters for either you hate one or love the other this is a mind thing you can't you have to be single minded you can't be straddled the fence it's one way or the other also says in the same chapter tells us about worrying. So many people, so many of you worry about people, we worry about our children, we worry about our family, we worry about the outcome of this. But worrying is simply nothing but a waste of time. Worry is another, uh, is, I heard Dr. Tony Evans said, worry is an unnecessary interest paid on a loan for your future that might never come. So instead of spending time submitting worried thoughts in the atmosphere of your mind, spend time submitting yourself to God. Now you understand, you got, must understand this, God always holds parts to himself, things he keeps to himself that he don't release to us because the Lord wants to build trust. I want you to know that God still works miracles fact that you woke up this morning it was a miracle you didn't just sleep through the night and get up it was a miracle and your next miracle is like your next breath but you must understand the thoughts and belief are caught up in in that and you got to clean keep the thoughts clean so that you can experience the totality of the miracles of god dr evans says something he said that emotions are dumb you know, they don't have any thought for themselves. As a matter of fact, he says that they are borrowed thoughts. That's what emotions are, borrowed thoughts. They don't even belong, belong to anybody. You have to not act on emotions. You must find out what the root of the, the issue is and work on that. So, because what happens if Satan influences your thought, 
then he has influence on you. Whoever has the thoughts has hands on the emotions. Don't let the enemy have the thoughts. The scripture says, let this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus. I don't think we realize every day how we're wired and programmed with so many different things from so many people, so many things we've experienced and heard, and it's in our systems. I don't think we, some of us don't understand that we, we, some of, we live in a nasty atmosphere, uh, atmospheric sin in a sense, where everything around us is contaminated. So we thrive off that and we live off that and end up negative, more negative than we would have been had we been in a more positive environment. I'm reminded of when people say, you know, that secondhand smoke is more deadly than firsthand. That's the way sin is. Sometimes we got things wrong with us that we inherited from other people, from being around other people, and we didn't know we picked it up. But because we stayed within the proximity of them and dealt with them, we end up inheriting their battles and their and the spirits of their battles. So be careful not to 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 avoid overlooking hidden sin. Avoid overlooking uh, or over omitting sin or being silent when you need to speak it. Speaking when you need to be silent and engaging in things that's not of God. The Book of Lamentations says. In the third chapter, Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, made a statement. He says, uh, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fell not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, safe my soul. Now, I want you to understand, therefore I will I hope in him, is what he said. The Satan, my soul. Jeremiah has an inter conversation with his intellectual part, with his rationale part, with his emotions, which is located in the soul. The soul is where all the emotions are, are, are held. It's the seat of the thought realm. We have to deal with our soul. And one scripture says, He restored my soul. Our soul needs restored. And somebody said in the script, my soul does magnify him. And that means that you allow your soul to enlarge God. That's what your soul is. You got to get it right in your soul and operate out of that so that you can move in the compassions of the Lord. Isaiah 41 says, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith God. Isaiah talks about that because he knows that some of us need comfort in our spirits. The scripture talks about, as he said, the righteous cry and the Lord hear it and deliver them out of all their troubles. The reason why the righteous cry is because their emotions are messed up, but they cry from their soul to the Lord. He'll deliver them out. He says that the Lord is nigh unto them that are broken heart, broken in the mind, broken, save it such as be of a contract spirit. And then it says many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. So God has made peace with us and done some great things. I was um, reading the word and I was praying to heard from God. The Lord said, Revelation 7. And as I went to the word of God, I found in the word of God that, that if we can get this in our mind, that God's going to wipe all of our tears away. As a matter of fact, in Revelation 7, there was about four angels who stood on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds. And they were about to do damage. But one angel ran in the midst of them and said, Oh, don't do any damage. For there are some people coming. There were tribes coming. The tribe of Issachar, the tribe of Zebulun, the tribe of Joseph. They were coming through in the thousands. About 12,000 each. They were coming through. They were coming through. Uh, that wasn't it all. He said that I got a group that's coming through. That who've been through the great revelation, washed their robes, <laughs> and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. God has made room for us. And he promised to wipe all our tears away. 
But we got to keep our mind stayed on him. Yeah, I understand that it's God's perfect will that we prosper, that we be in good health. Keep your mind stayed on God. This is Pastor Howard, and I just want to talk to you a little bit and hope I help you. We'll have church this Sunday at uh, 1130 at 1745 uh, Lucas Avenue. We look to see you there. We have masks for you. We have hand sanitizers. We have everything uh, that you need to keep you safe. We're practicing social distances. We want to be safe. But more than just being safe from the COVID-19, we want to be safe in this home. If you don't know Christ tonight, I want to invite you to know the Lord. I want to invite you to repent for all your sin and ask the Lord to come into your heart. Save you in the name of Jesus. God bless you tonight. May I put something on the screen later on for you to cash out and like, sow into the ministry. We really need people who are so and give and bless Lord's house. God is doing great things. And he's doing great things in you.